records, cassettes, phooey. Long live the 8-track. At least according to the enthusiasts we met at a recent 8-track swap. Hey, Russ. Russ Forster. Hi. Hey, tell us what's going on here. Uh, there's an 8-track swap meet in progress, and we've got all kinds of good tapes to trade. We don't take money for these things. We only accept trades. And there's some trading, some heavy trading going on right now. But usually you only find them at thrift stores buried under a bunch of other stuff, you know? Well, but that's part of the fun. It's, the, it's part of the challenge is to dig up this culture. We consider ourselves to be modern day archaeologists. Why do you think it disappeared? It's basically was a setup by the record companies. They wanted to move on to cassettes. Cassettes were cheaper to make, easier. And they just convinced people that eight tracks were lousy. You publish a magazine. Yes, I do. Uh, my magazine, 8-Track Mind. You okay. also made a movie about 8-Track collectors. Yeah, they're so wrong. They're right. I love Eric because he looks over me while I'm listening to all my 8-Tracks, and my dream is for Eric Estrada to come visit me and my entire 8-Track collection. What do you like about 8-Tracks? What, well, what's there not to like about 8-Tracks? Aesthetically pleasing. They're convenient, they're extremely inexpensive. They're obsolete, aren't they? Um, some people think so. Their heyday was back in the 70s. Their first heyday, sure. You think there's going to be another heyday? I, I don't think they've ever gone away. There can only be one heyday. It's, been, it's a continual heyday. It's been a 30-year heyday. I've discovered lots of really good music for 25 cents that I wouldn't be willing to risk $14 on a CD for. What is it about an 8-track? It makes that special sound, doesn't it? Ka-chung. Yeah. That's the song. Ka-chung. Ka-chunk. Ka-chunk. It's very zen, and there's a lot of zen in 8-track. It's a loop that goes forever. It's kind of Mobius. You know, there's a lot of religion and spirituality going on. Very white. Wow. Now, I've never seen this tape before. How did this... And it's still in its wrapping. What would you trade for that, you think? I'd definitely give up the Paul Anka. This is my big trade of the day right here. What you I did? Traded, I traded Funkadelic for the Ramones. What I have here is an old A-Track called Twiggy and the Girlfriends. It was made in Belgium. You probably play an A-Track, sample it, hear some music that, that you've never heard heard before. And a lot of it's very bad music, exactly. unfortunately. <laughs> You're sort of just a, a, a shadowy figure who lurks on the fringes. An A-track voyeur. Ah, okay. If you look at Russ's film, you'll see that like there are only like very special figures who are A-track collectors, and we hope to be like part of that whole scenario. The players just started to flood into the house. I had gotten this one in the mail, still in its original box. It was an incredible day. It was the same day that the yellow one and the red one had entered our lives, and we had a set. Kind of a violent thing, a tracking where you're well, yeah. shoving the player in, and uh, and you'll see I left the price tag intact. And Ten cents you paid for. Yeah. Some people think that was too much. Those, yeah. those two are brothers. Yeah. They seem a little too intimate to be yeah, brothers. Yeah. That's that's. I'm hoping that the cover is what's going to get me some good swap action. <laughs> We're going to throw a CD and an a track against a brick wall and see which one survives. A track. Now, I don't know if your test is going to work no, out here. Uh, here's the CD. <laughs> well, you know, actually... Well, the, the CD survived, actually. I'm not, I think your test backfired, Russ. Oh, well. Russ, if somebody wants to participate in the next 8-track swap, what should they do? They should call Delilah's, and that number is 773-472-2771. And for your zine, 8-track mind? They should go to Tower Books. And how about this thing? Oh, it's fixable.